Hello everyone, I'm making a series of very informal videos showing some of the features and benefits of Hearform Pro 2018. You may recognize from the screenshot that this is our older Hearform 11.5 home screen. Well, one of the concerns with our new users was that the home screen was a little bit busy and a little bit confusing. So one, one of our goals is to try to provide a less busy screen but actually provide more features in that process. So I'm going to hide that and show you a picture of Hearform Pro 2018. We also have made the screen a little bit wider to accommodate those who prefer a widescreen monitor. That especially will come in handy when I show you the scheduling part of Hearform where we can see a lot more columns than we could before. But I'm going to kind of break down the different parts of Hearform Pro 2018 again into a series of different videos. Please forgive me if I mumble and stumble through a little bit of it, but I want to get the videos out so that you can all take a look and see what's going on with our new system. As you can see, we no longer have tabs across the top, although you can show button bars at the top. But basically we have broken down our tabs off to the side here and this allows us a little bit wider uh, format and um, a little bit taller than we had before. So I'm going to again break down some of those different buttons here from the scheduler, invoicing devices, etc. in a moment. But I first want to show you a variety of different things that we do on the home screen. Just like before, we have a picture of the patient here and we have the patient's name where you can click on the name right there and it will put you into a search mode to find the patient. We have a series of colored buttons that are easier to work right here, so you can hold the mouse over and see what that color represents. Just by clicking the button, just like before, it's just easier to use now. One of the things you can also do is hide or show those colors if they're a little bit irritating to you. And then you can very easily change the colors and what they represent by clicking that button right there. We also have a series of buttons no longer down the side, but across the top, and they're larger buttons now. But watch what happens, for example, when I click the letter S. Simply by clicking the letter S, you see this pan panel over here, just kind of, it's called a slider panel, and it changed to show each of those patients in the found set. So as I click down, you don't have to go to a list view and just see a little bit about that patient. You can simply click on the desired patient on the left-hand side, and you're going to see all that information about the patient right there. You can omit a patient right from here from your group if you want. I'll give you another quick example. Let's say I wanted to find everyone named Mary in my database. By doing a search for Mary, there are all my Marys on the far left. So we think that that's kind of cool to be able to click through and just see all your Marys right there on that one screen. I'm going to click this top middle button to pull back my, uh, the rest of my buttons on that slider bar. So again, simply clicking the button here will pull up all of the patients that match that particular letter criteria. We have other buttons. For example, we want to make things less busy. So you might recall at the bottom, we used to show record information, but rather than show that all the time, we just create a little button that shows it on an as-needed basis to see when the record was created, who created it, that sort of thing. It makes it a lot easier. Let's also look at this button right here. We can make the, the system quite a bit less busy. So for example, notice the colored buttons on the far left. I can hide them completely, not just the colors themselves. I can hide that alphabet if you don't want to use it. And you can continue to hide things just by clicking those buttons and uh, showing or hiding whatever desired objects you want on that screen. So for example, we have a series of tooltips throughout the program, but once you learn the tooltips, you may just want to uncheck that box and hide them. So you'll also notice that when I click a button, we now have something called card windows. And those card windows will actually take the background and make it uh, dimmed out a little bit and bring focus to the front window. But you don't have to leave the screen now in many of our different, um, different pop-ups, as you'll see later. So let's continue. Obviously, we just have basic demographics, name, address, and phone number, but we've added little things like this. Uh, this little microphone, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. This little microphone here allows you to pop up something to uh, put in a pronunciation for a first or a last name if that's necessary. You can click a button and pop up the patient type and add more than one patient. You could do that before and it's just a little bit easier now. Let's zoom back just a little bit. I'm pressing either F uh, excuse me, um, F3 or Shift F3 to zoom in and out. We also have a little button down here that you can click and zoom in and out as well. 
But again, as I uh, looked at this button right here, it will pop up a guarantor screen right there, making it easy to now add a primary and a secondary guarantor for that child or other patient. Perhaps it's a, a parent. And um, any anytime you select one of these buttons here, then the correspondence will go to that particular guarantor if desired. Again, it could be a parent, mother and father in two separate areas, etc. We also again have the name, address, and uh, phone number just like before, but we have the ability to very easily click a button and add your additional addresses right there. And then this is really important. You can choose the default uh, preferred method of contact. And as you'll see, that comes in handy uh, later when we start uh, communicating with the patient. Uh, by clicking a button here, then I can pull up a map of the patient's uh, home and I can show directions by clicking that button right there and it'll pull up directions from the patient's front door to my front door, similar to a, uh, in the way it used to, but it's a lot easier now. Uh, we can still text patients their appointments. Again, we now click a button and you can pull up all the additional phone numbers for that patient right here, making it a little bit easier to see and not taking up as much space as, as, much space as it did before. The same is true with email addresses. You now have the ability to easily see an unlimited number of email addresses for that particular patient. We can still keep track of the referral source. That used to be in the upper right hand area, but as you'll notice, we're, we're using some of that space for something else. And uh, one of the nice things about this is that we can now click here and see from the previous uh, entries for a physician. We can also choose that uh, slightly different drop-down list off to the side where I can see all the physicians that are in my system making it a little bit easier or finally I can have a customized list to make that drop down list anything that I want but another important thing is we now have the ability to add an unlimited number of referral sources for that particular patient as you know the patient may have originally been referred by their physician but the next time you want to change that to they were referred because of a May is better hearing month letter or a newspaper ad or some kind of other direct mail piece etc so you have the ability to have an unlimited number of referral sources right on the home screen for that patient. We also have the ability, like before, to do recalls, but something that's a little bit different is I can click a button and it will find all the recalls that match a particular criteria, and I can click this button and it will automatically send a fax, a text, or an email message depending on the um, default that we have set up for that patient. Hello Jennifer, it's been about whatever. Uh, as we get into this later, you'll see that it will automatically fill in the whole letter, the whole email or the whole text with whatever desired information simply by choosing a particular recall type. And it's very simple to set up your recall types here. Again, I set up a, a one year retest here and I can put in a word, phrase, sentence, paragraph or full page and it'll automatically pull that onto an email, text, or a standard letter. That's going to be much, much easier to do your recall communication now. We just like before can pull up your um, assigned clinician for a particular patient. Just a little bit easier now to uh, set that information up with new clinicians including their photograph and signature if desired. As you know the signature will automatically carry forward to most forms and letters. And again, I would assign that patient to an office location, much easier, just click a button and you can set that office location up right here. You don't have to go looking for everything under setup, although you can look there as well. So as we scroll down a little bit further on the left, we have our chart notes area that's been increased in size. We used to, as you saw from that other picture before, let's go back to it, we had a single line here, kind of short, and you could see three different chart notes for that particular patient. Well, a lot of our customers have said they wanted to see more. So we can actually show quite a bit more information, even though this is just a very short note, in this much larger area. And you can slide over and see additional notes right there by clicking these buttons. So if desired, you can maximize that note and just see quite a bit more of that information. And you can turn that into a PDF, or you can click this button and it will turn it into a um, a, a, a printable set of notes for you if desired. We also make it real easy to enter notes. So for example, here's a quick entry note button where it'll pop up one of those card windows again. And now we have 50 quick entry buttons. You would set those buttons up to say anything you want. 
such as I want to do this and this and this and this and this. And then when you save that note, uh, all of that information is ready for you. Another real cool feature is that HearForm Pro 2018 is the only office management system in our industry that has a custom dedicated app built. And we have a free app available for the iPad and the iPhone to where you can pull up your notes and everything that you say will just be uh, typed right into this area here from your iPhone or your iPad. It makes it real simple to enter those notes. You can also, as you can see, you can uh, colorize your notes very easily. You can make them bold or you can actually uh, do quite a bit with them depending on you know, what your need is. Change the size of the text and that sort of thing. So it's real easy to enter notes with just a single click here. But we also have a more advanced area that allows you to quickly enter additional information and save or append previous notes, etc. So we think you'll really like the new chart notes area, especially the abil ability to be able to dictate right into that uh, chart note. We'll go back to the original note here. And let's look a little bit lower. We see that two devices were recorded for Jennifer. And just like before, we, we only have so much space here and we wanted to add things like the dome and receiver and we used to put that off to the side. But that side, uh, other side is valuable for other things now. So what we have is the ability to show five times as much information in the same amount of space. And when I click this button, then it slides over and shows me for that same serialized device, the dome, speaker, retention, tube size. You have all that information with drop down lists, etc and you can just click another button and see remote control information or ear mold information. So all of that is right there and able to, to be used very easily. So again, I'll just kind of quick, quickly go through each of those little areas there. If you use an iPad or an iPhone, you can easily swipe with your finger and that slider just moves over, makes it very easy to enter information. The same slider is true, by the way. Uh, you, you saw that we could do that with chart notes and with um, hearing aids, but we can also do that with custom fields. We used to have 10 custom fields on the screen, and now we have the ability to make those custom fields much wider. You can very easily set up your custom fields just by clicking a button and naming the field whatever you want so you don't have to call us for help. But you can also kind of scroll through here. By clicking that button, you can see custom 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. And you now have up to 30 custom fields that you can title in whatever way you'd like. It's also very easy to um, set up the, uh, let me just show a couple of things here, turn this back on, but you can actually uh, click a button and set that up and uh, put anything you want in your drop down list of choices. So that makes it much easier. And as we scroll up a little bit higher, you'll see that we have uh, something called the visit history. The visit history is very similar to, again, let's show you the picture from before this area here, but this was a little bit limited. We only had so much room here because of real estate, of course. And so what we can do now is we show actually even less, but we have the ability to click a button here and it pulls up a complete history for that patient showing quite a bit more information and you can interact with that information. For example, if you wanted to keep track of the results or the reason for the results, was a third party scheduled, did they actually attend, how many years were aidable versus aided, etc. And all of those are searchable. So for example, I could find all appointments that matched a particular criteria for a particular date range and just for hearing evals or cleaning checks. But I also have the ability to just click this magnifying glass and very easily find all my appointments for last week. And uh, in this case, I didn't have any, but let me do that again and pull it for this week. And there's um, all of my appointments showed up on the left and that's all my appointments ready to go. And I have the ability then to uh, very easily print an appointment letter for each of those, email the appointment letter or text the appointment letter for one or a large group of them all at once. It makes it really easy to be able to do that. So I'll give you a quick example here. I could limit those and just constrain it to people who have mail and print those out for them if I want, or I could print out my recalls. I could limit it to text or emails and send a large group at once. So it's really, really simple to be able to uh, send out your appointment letters and recall letters, etc. So we think you'll like this new um, visit history window right there. But one of the most exciting parts of HearForm is not just the ability to have 
one item in this place, but we actually have the ability to click these dots, and now we've separated the, the forms from the letters. So you could put all of your forms in here if you, if you want, all of your letters, and just scroll down and find the appropriate letter and choose that follow-up to thank the patient for purchasing. Click a button and it will print that letter. Of course, you'd rather perhaps in some cases email the letter to a patient and uh, you can do that to an individual just like Jennifer or you could do it to 13 people called the found set. However, number it could be 200 or, or 10, it doesn't matter. It's much easier to do your forms and letters uh, than it used to be because you can send them all at once. We also have a to-do list here where it'll turn red if, you're, if your due date is passed, but you can also uh, categorize those for each of the, the clinicians or staff members in your office. And we can put additional information uh, on here to keep track of uh, all kinds of information. We can expand that, make it a little bit easier to see. And the to-do list is, is really nice. Now that's based on an individual uh, office location or, or, or the individuals within the office, I should say, not based on the patients. We have a to-do list for the patients as well, but this is to-do lists that you want to take advantage of for your own needs. Finally, let's look over here, and this allows us, we can slide the dots down in any direction. This, for example, if you don't want to use our scheduler, this can actually be your primary window that shows up um, when you first open the program. So this, this new window allows us to search for audiograms based on the degree of loss, of course the, the date, and um, if you wanted the pure tone average, things like that. But I want to show you the second dot in a different, um, in a different uh, video, and that's uh, one of the most um, exciting parts of HearForm called HearFlix and HearDocs. So we'll come back to that in a different video. But this one's getting a little long, so I want to show you a final area. This whole center area here, upper left, I should say, uh, actually slides over with a click of a dot, and this is where we can now assign a physician to uh, Jennifer or assign a payer. And you can see multiple payers and multiple physicians right on the screen here. So again, it makes it easier to interact with uh, your different payers and uh, physicians. Additional patient information, if desired, um, again, uh, just additional comments that you may want to want to make about that particular patient. And then finally, if you again want a, a map, you can expand the map, uh, make it a full screen, or just show the patient uh, directions on the map as well. So it's a fully interactive map that you can just click and uh, move around. So we think that that's kind of a nice way of getting um, to know the patient and perhaps giving them some directions, that sort of thing. Now again, I'll follow up with another video, but I wanted you to see this area. In the next video, we'll talk about the area to the right and then here flicks and here docs.